Greetings, this is Dennis Osborne, the creator of Vision Basic for the Commodore 64. This video attempts to cover a lot of ground, so please feel free to fast forward past any portion that doesn't interest you. What you are seeing on screen is just a tiny demo of what Vision Basic can do. Vision Basic tries to accomplish what no other expanded C64 Basic has done before. Vision Basic is fast, powerful, versatile, and the programs you create with it can be given to others without them needing a copy of Vision Basic themselves. You can write programs and execute them in Vision Basic without ever having to leave the editor. If you love Basic but are tired of its limitations and lack of speed, then you're in the right place. Say goodbye to endless register pokes, say goodbye to your Simon's Basic cartridge, or any other Basic extension that you always have to load. Say goodbye to those separate little machine language routines that you need to poke into memory or load from disk. Say goodbye to compilers that require you to save your program, load compiler, run compiler, exit compiler, load compiled program, run compiled program, ooh, found some bugs, reload original program, edit program, etc, etc, etc. I began to write Vision Basic about 20 years ago. Back then, the Super CPU was all the rage. I knew that my C64 was so full of potential, but it was such a pain to program. All I ever wanted was a programming language from a Commodore that could allow me to make whatever the heck I wanted to make easily and with satisfying results. I wanted to stop having to poke here, poke there, poke, 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 poke. My vision was for every graphics and sound register to be accessible with dedicated commands. I wanted Vision Basic to be as fast as it possibly could be, my top priority, and as compatible as possible with the Basic we all know. I also wanted it to retain the feel of Commodore Basic. Vision Basic is not the kind of project that most people take on alone. This is the most ambitious thing I've ever worked on. I spent several years and countless, countless hours working on Vision Basic. So why Basic? Why not create a brand new language, you ask? Well, for familiarity. I'm willing to bet that most of you aren't interested in learning a new programming language. I mean, we already know the language, we just want it to work better. When you load and run Vision Basic, this is pretty much what you'll see. Typically, you won't have to reload it again and again in one sitting like you would need to do with a program like Blitz, a popular compiler. I chose the green color scheme to remind the users that they're not using regular Basic, but these colors can be changed to whatever floats your 8-bit boat. First, I'd like to briefly go over the file mode. Just type file to access it. Here you can see some file and memory information, and you could change some settings as well. The memory tab shows you how much memory your program takes up out of what's available, and shows the memory usage of other program related matters. Most of the information displayed here is updated after you compile a program. The Banks tab. Vision Basic provides 10 programming banks to work with, though most people could probably get by with just the first one. Here you can turn them on and off and give each one a title. Banks are useful if you'd like to load and save user-defined command sets, for example. The Details tab displays information pertaining to the code that resides in a particular bank. Here you can change the file name for your entire program, a descriptive title for the code in the current bank, the author's name for this code, the date or version number for it, and a description of what the code is all about. I made navigating around each page here very, very easy. All of these details are saved along with the source code. The Settings tab allows you to alter certain settings for Vision Basic. The first column of settings mostly pertain to memory management, and the second column relates to the main editor screen colors. You can see how changing the colors will affect the display in the tiny little monitor depicted on screen. And if, uh, say, you'd like to go back to the original Commodore 64 colors, you can just simply do it right here. Um, but for the, for the moment, we're going to change it back. So, anyhow. Okay, back to the editor. Vision Basic is compiled basic. It borrows a lot from the C64 Basic etched in ROM, but for the sake of speed, a whole new engine runs under its hood. More than a hundred new and powerful commands have been added, bringing in the best ideas from all over Basic history. There are several commands and functions that Vision Basic doesn't support, though most of them can be reproduced in the form of user-defined commands. And here is the list of commands not supported. 
Vision Basic was designed for speed, and a floating point number system would considerably slow things down. So decimal values are limited to seven places, and the largest values top out at plus and minus 16,777,215. Let's first explore some of the simple ways that Vision Basic improves upon regular Basic. Take the humble character function, for example. If you add a second parameter, it specifies the number of times to print your chosen character. Now, as you notice in the, how quickly that appeared on screen, I'm just going to simply cut and paste these things to make it quicker. Uh, here, let's run it first. Here we've drawn 40 line characters. Notice that the print command is not needed. The greater than symbol is required to execute program commands in immediate mode. The poke command also gets a much needed makeover. In Vision Basic, you can add as many parameters to the poke command as a line will handle. You can even poke strings to memory. Okay, I'm going to remove the screen up for this demonstration. And there you go. The text and the numbers were poked to the top of the screen. The peak function has been improved as well. If you add a second parameter, it acts as an index that gets added to the first parameter. So in line 1504, we are accessing a byte three bytes forward from our base address AD. The go sub command can now be followed by as many line numbers as you can fit on a single line. Each subroutine you supply will be called in sequence. The if then statement has been improved in a manner of speaking. The different parts of the statement don't have to reside on the same line. For example, you can type the following. Notice that the then can be used multiple times, and notice that you can use else as well. Vision Basic makes loading files from within your programs quite a breeze. Vision Basic also allows you to save a chunk of memory to disk with its version of the save command followed by a few parameters. The end command in Vision Basic is an improvement over regular Basic because sprites are cleared, sounds are turned off, and you're pretty much returned back to the default text screen. The RND function, or random function, gets a makeover too. You have your usual parameter of 1, which will generate a random fraction. A parameter of 2 generates a random whole number, and a parameter of 4 generates a random sign and these values can be combined to generate a combined result. So, for example, if we wish to generate a random whole number with a random sign, we can simply supply a parameter of 6. Everything I've said so far is just meant to whet your appetite a little. I'm not going to go into everything Vision Basic can do, but Vision Basic does have commands for sprites, sound, bitmap graphics, expanded RAM, and more. Vision Basic even provides commands for raster interrupts, which seriously simplify the process of setting them up. And if a command you need doesn't exist in Vision Basic, you can often create the command yourself. And the commands you create with Vision Basic can be saved to a separate file so that they can be imported into other programs, or you can share them with others. So how does Vision Basic stack up against a compiler like Blitz? Overall, Vision Basic is much faster. How about a little demo? This demo here basically fills the screen with reverse spaces and then changes their color a total of 32 times. Let's run it to show you. This program runs three times faster in Vision Basic compared to Blitz and six to seven times faster compared to regular Basic. But of course, there are multiple ways of doing things in Vision Basic. Let's make some changes as soon as this <laughs> demo is done. Okay, there you go. Notice that we're now poking four characters at once, and we're using a couple new commands. Let's run it. Now with these changes, the demo runs about six and a half times faster than Blitz. But we could just use the CLS command. 
run it and really blow Blitz out of the water. Almost 68 times faster than Blitz. Okay, let's talk about machine language for a minute. I've never been a fan of writing programs in pure machine language, and I really hate how most assemblers format the code. And the old school method of poking machine code to RAM from data statements tends to waste precious memory. Now if you recall, Vision Basic makes it easy to load an external machine language file from disk. But why can't it be simpler than that? Well, Vision Basic also doubles as an assembler. With Vision Basic, you can not only place machine language instructions anywhere you want within your program, but you can also alternate between typing Basic and machine language on a single line. Yes, it's really that easy. All right, let's run it. This example isn't exactly practical, but it shows just how easy it is to mix basic and machine language on the same line. The brackets are needed to tell Vision Basic to be on the lookout for machine language instructions, but only the opening bracket is mandatory. Vision Basic can be set up to automatically supply the brackets for you. Flexible formatting is why I love using Vision Basic as an assembler. To me, I just find this easier to read, but you can format things however you wish. Comments can be added to a line by supplying the usual semicolon. This example is meant to show you how you can interact basic with machine language. The machine language adds a thousand to the given variable and the proof of this is printed out when we run the program. So what you see here is that we have a variable equaling 243 and then lines 20 and 30 add 1000 to the variable and then 40 prints the results. You can also execute machine language instructions in immediate mode. If you blink, you missed it. Now if it hasn't already been made clear, Vision Basic requires expanded RAM in order to operate. It requires a minimum expansion of 256K, but I recommend at least 512K of expanded memory. Currently, only REU memory, REU memory and Super CPU expanded RAM are supported, though other types of expanded memory will be looked at for consideration in an updated version of Vision Basic. But the wonderful thing about Vision Basic is that the programs you create with it won't require the expanded memory in order to run, unless you design them to. So you can create an awesome game program in Vision Basic and you should be able to run it on any stock C64 computer. Vision Basic does provide commands that allow you to access the expanded memory in both an REU and the Super CPU. If you don't have any kind of expanded RAM laying around, don't fret. You do have several options at your disposal. First, the Vice emulator can be set up to emulate an REU all the way up to 16 megabytes, and it can also emulate a super CPU with expanded RAM. And since Vice is free, it certainly is an economical option. You can also buy an REU for about $100 plus or minus when someone puts one up for sale on eBay. Finally, the Turbo Chameleon 64, the 1541 Ultimate, and the Ultimate 64 all provide REU emulation. The 1541 Ultimate is the cheapest of these options, but the Turbo Chameleon has a fast mode that Vision Basic can tap into. Vision Basic actually benefits from the speed boost provided by both the Turbo Chameleon and the Super CPU. With either of these two items, your programs can be compiled significantly faster. Larger programs can take seconds to compile with their speed boost capabilities instead of minutes. Also, Vision Basic provides a command that can give your programs access to the speed boost that both of these hardware devices provide. New products for the C64 always seem to be on the horizon, so I suspect that even more options for expanded memory are on their way. So if you're serious about programming, I suggest upgrading your C64 with one of these devices. Besides, you'll be helping to ensure that your C64 setup will survive well into the next few decades. Let's start off with some demonstrations of Vision Basic's bitmap capabilities. I'm not a demo coder by any stretch, so I apologize for the simplicity of it all. This example demonstrates how the bitmap plotting colors can be changed on the fly. Ordinarily, a multicolor bitmap screen typically only displays three plotting colors on a single color background. But Vision Basic's drawing commands can be directed to plot additional colors. 
In this part of my demonstration, we have 13 total colors being displayed at once on a single multicolor bitmap image. And I'll show you one more time. All right. Next, we will be filling the entire bitmap screen with diagonal lines. I programmed the line drawing routines of Vision Basic to be as fast as they could possibly be within reason. As you can see here, completely filling a bitmap screen with diagonal lines can take several seconds though. But notice what happens if we use vertical lines instead. The process for drawing vertical lines is much simpler, so the task of filling the screen with them runs about 3.4 times faster. Vision Basic has a dedicated command for drawing vertical lines. But the fastest line that Vision Basic can draw is a horizontal one. And not only that, but you can also specify plotting patterns instead of the usual four colors when drawing horizontal lines. As you can see here, the screen now fills almost 12 times faster compared with our first fill using diagonal lines. You can see how fast it is, it's pretty fast. You can set up these plotting patterns ahead of time, or you can alter them on the fly as I have done in this gradient example. The gradient effect here is actually a combination of several plotting patterns, and I find this combination of colors rather striking, and I like this combination as well. I couldn't decide which one I liked better, so I included them both in my demonstration. Bitmap animation on the Commodore 64 is painfully slow in most cases, and seldomly impressive. But again, I've designed Vision Basic to give programmers as much speed and power as possible. What you see here is a bitmap image being drawn repeatedly on alternating screens. Two screens are being flipped into view back and forth, back and forth. The screen that you cannot see is fully cleared before the triangle here is redrawn. With various key presses, I can move the triangle about the screen, which is what you've been seeing so far. And I can also change the pattern. I've chosen two patterns for this demonstration. I want to impress upon you one of the benefits of owning an REU. REUs have this incredible ability to help clear bitmap screens at much faster speeds, and the interesting part is that the, it only requires a single byte from the REU to do so. So, um, watch the speed here. This is normal bitmap clean, clearing speed. And this is using REU. A lot faster. So I can get diagonal. Yeah. And we'll go back to regular bitmap clearing uh, speed. And again, our faster friend, the REU. Here is another example of bitmap animation, a rotating cube. To help speed up the animation, all calculations for the cube's vertices were performed ahead of time. I also added some machine language to the mix to speed things up a little bit more. Things can be sped up even further if we employ an REU to clear things up between frames. And this is just like our previous demo. First of all, we have our regular bitmap clearing uh, routine being used. And here we have the RU bitmap clearing routine being used. And we'll go back to the slower um, regular bitmap clearing routine. And again, go back to RU speed. The final part of this demonstration shows off Vision Basic's ability to set up raster interrupts. An interrupt routine is displaying and moving the total of 64 sprite shapes that you see here. Under normal program control is a routine that is drawing the grayscale lines you see in the background. It took a little planning to figure out what lines to place the sprites on and where to issue the interrupts, but setting up interrupts with Vision Basic commands is such a breeze. You still might have to know a little machine language to control what happens during your interrupts, but again, setting them up is rather simple. Now let's get to the fun part, a game I created in Vision Basic for the purpose of demonstrating its capabilities. I figured that if I wanted to showcase how powerful Vision Basic can be, 
I might want to create an actual program with it other than Vision Basic itself. Yes, Vision Basic actually compiles itself. Okay, let's compile this puppy. The game is called Herald, and it actually centers around a cat who's afraid of mice. It's essentially a Pac-Man styled game, but you have weapons at your disposal, and both you and the bad guys can go through some of the walls. I started creating this game a few decades ago and never finished it. I honestly don't know why, but perhaps it was because it was written purely in machine language and I hit a snag. I came across the old game files in the past year or so, and decided it would be a perfect project to breathe life back into. Vision Basic to the rescue. Now I'd like to clarify that this game is written mostly in BASIC with some exceptions. First, Machine Language offers two instructions that easily allow you to turn interrupts on and off, the SEI and CLI instructions, so I use those in place of their BASIC equivalents. It's just much easier, so speed wasn't the consideration here. I also use Vision Basic's compare command which works in conjunction with some of the machine language branching instructions. You can write an awesome program entirely with basic commands in Vision Basic, but if you simply learn four machine language branching instructions, your programs will gain a significant speed boost, and it really doesn't take a whole lot of effort to learn how to use them. Each instruction is like a conditional go-to statement. The real beauty with Vision Basic is that you can write a program entirely in basic and later convert parts of it into machine language to improve its speed. The source file for this game is pretty hefty, so compiling it could take a couple minutes on a stock 64 without an accelerator. I originally wanted the programs to list during the compile process. I've seen compilers that do this, but I discovered that this seriously adds to the wait time, so I opted against it. And we should be coming up to the end of the compiling process here. Few more seconds. And there we go. Now let's see how compiling things has affected the memory related values in file mode. So we go into file mode. Now you can see several bars that weren't there the first time we visited the screen. When a bar is green, all is good. When a bar is yellow, you need to be careful. And when a bar is red, you're about to run out of memory. As you can see, there are no red bars here, so we're good. Um, the program source code is 31,125 bytes in size. No problem there. The most important value is the var top add, short for variable top address. And here we are in the yellow with a value of 41,556, which is still OK. But one also has to keep in mind not to run this value into any kind of screen data, sprite data, or bitmaps and I've managed to keep this from happening for this game. Okay, let's exit and run the game, shall we? I'm just gonna let this play out for now. Um, this game is actually, uh, my brother also contributed to this game in um, the area of sprites. So his name gets to be on in the credits. And we'll go to the next screen. You can pick one or two players, which we'll just go with one. And we'll start out with an easy level level of difficulty. Okay, I paused the game, but uh, before I go any further, um, I'd like to explain some of the screen. Um, as you can see on the screen, there are a bunch of dots. And all those dots are basically cat food pellets. In the corners, you have uh, catnip bags. And when the cat runs into them, he goes kind of wild. So uh, when he's just regular Joe Cat, or Harold in this case, I'm sorry, uh, he's, he, he's going to be chased around by the mice. He's scared of them. But when he has catnip, he's kind of like, whoa, I'm strong, I'm brave, you know, I'm crazy. So, yeah, you can eat them. Now, close to, let me put the arrow into the screen here, uh, my pointer. Um, this little guy here is actually a bouncy object. Now, these guys, uh, when they, they actually, it's kind of like the cherries and stuff from Pac-Man. Uh, the only difference is, is that they actually lay down cat food pellets as they go along. And the problem with this um, for the player is that, 
you have to clear the screen of pellets before you can move on to the next screen. So if this object is left to kind of just hop around the screen and keep filling up with pellets, you're never going to exit the level. So it's very important to um, get rid of this guy. And um, when he, he reappears, he'll reappear as a white mouse. Uh, except in two-player mode where these uh, little bouncy guys, there's always going to be one on the screen. And you and your friend kind of have to work together to clear the screen, uh, even with the bouncy guy. So uh, good luck there. <laughs> I kind of had to make it, make it a little bit more difficult with two players. So basically, you have the, when the white mouse appears, you know, it's kind of an alternating thing between the bouncy thing and the white mouse. You, you basically pretty much don't want to touch the white mouse. You don't want to eat him or anything or else uh, the bouncy will come back. And there are several bouncy shapes, including um, cat scratching post, a fish, a Tweety Bird kind of thing. Let's see, a cat litter box, and a cat food dish. And I think that's all of them. Um, and also you'll notice right here, these are actually mouse traps. Um, when the mice run into them, they die, and they go back to the middle. Uh, you also notice here that we have some white lines here. These are, anytime these are on screen, um, this is where the mice can go through. You can't go through those parts, uh, but you can go through the green, uh, the green walls, and they cannot. So it kind of affords you a little bit of an escape uh, in case you're kind of pressed in here. Um, what else can I say? Um, also on some screens you'll see um, uh, the, the letters MT. That allows you to um, collect a few mouse traps for placement for yourself. You just pr press this uh, fire button and you lay a mouse trap. And when the mouse runs into it, he gets uh, he dies. And again, you don't want the white mouse to run into that one, so be careful where you place uh, that. And I'm hoping to um, include this game and the code along with Vision Basic so that you can look through the code and see how it was done and you know how certain commands were used. Um, oh, I also do want to point out this. Um, these are um, hairballs, and essentially, when you eat those, your cat can um, pretty much throw hairballs at the mice, which stuns them. It doesn't kill them, but for many tight situations, you know, you're going to want to have these hairballs. Now, you can collect hairballs, and they'll appear um, right, or I think, right here, or the mouse traps, and then somewhere over here is the other thing. So you're going to have mouse traps and hairballs uh, collect down here as you collect them and hairballs actually get since only the fire button is used to, uh, um, to handle both of these things um, hairballs are fired first and then mouse traps are laid second so if you run out of uh, hairballs you'll end up with mouse traps if you have any um, left on the screen okay and I think that's uh, pretty much all I have to say um, I'm going to Play the game a little. I haven't played this in a little while, so I apologize for being uh, rusty. Here we go. Okay, that was one hairball. As you can see, the mouse is stunned. And let's see if we can stun somebody else here. Oh. Okay, this is what happens when your cat dies. You basically become a little cat angel. How about that? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to eat the catnip. The cat catnip is a little noisy. Catnip mode, anyway. Okay. I'm kind of just wandering here. Right, the other one. One, the screen level. How about that? Okay. <laughs> it's not that hard, actually. Okay, I'm going to pause this, too. Now, here you can see the uh, MTs on the screen, the letters MT. 
Uh, I'll bring my cursor down here, right about there. Uh, these are to get your mouse traps, and we have lots of these little um, green walls to go through, and also lots of white walls that the mice can go through. So uh, I'm not going to play this screen a whole lot. We're going to move on to the rest of the demo, but uh, here you can see that we also have the little uh, scratching post bouncy. Now I want to, uh, I'm pausing again, I want to make uh, mention also that you cannot fire weapons when you are uh, in wildcat mode. Um, and I also failed to mention um, if you have any reserved hairballs and mouse traps that they are worth 100 points each. Okay, I'll stop the game here and move on to the rest of the demo. Okay, on to the final part of our video. Vision Basic also comes with a powerful free sprite editing program called the Spreadator. When you design sprite shapes in the Spreadator, the colors you specify for each shape, as well as the attributes for each shape, are saved along with your sprite data file, and can be easily called back up with a specific Vision Basic sprite command. So if a particular sprite that you create in the Spreadator happens to be yellow, multicolor, vertically expanded, and its shared colors are red and blue, all of that information can be accessed, access, sorry, by Vision Basic and reinstated with little effort on your part. The Spreadator also provides many sprite manipulation features not found in your average sprite editing program. Now, pretty much like uh, there, there are actually two different editors. Um, available this is a multicolor editor you can also change the grid colors uh, this is actually um, the cat from the herald game but as you can see the colors in the editor the default colors are purple cyan and green and you can cycle through the different shapes available that's a large h but yes we can you can actually change the colors to whatever colors you wish I'm not going to go over everything the spread editor can do, but one of the nice features is that you can. Oops. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, wrong key. Uh, <laughs> one of the nice features is that you can uh, move the shapes around. So let's say you have a large shape or something. You want to take two sprite shapes and kind of make one shape out of them. Um, you can just simply put them side by side and you can kind of see how the parts are going to fit together when you design them. You can also cycle through your shapes as well um, with the individual sprites. And as you can see here, the color changes, if you remember me telling you, that um, since the sprite attribute data is saved, it's the program also reinstates it as... Uh, each shape is displayed here so here you can see uh, the gray mice and I'm just gonna cycle through them the uh, the dead mice uh, hairball um, scratching post uh, cat litter box um, food dish I'm gonna move it back where it belongs um, second food dish which looks identical the ball of yarn and the one leaning the other way, and the bird, and the fish, and then dead cat, and then uh, there's no more shapes. Okay. Now, one thing you can do, uh, you can kind of uh, animate your shapes here, like as so. Wait, sorry. Um, just kind of see how they animate when you design them. There are also commands to um, animate the shapes more fluidly. So this is a pretty good editor. It's a little dated because it was written a while ago. So you're going to have to read the book. And I haven't <laughs> used it in ages. So, uh, But it does work well with Vision Basic. I mean, it's, you know, the, the being able to save those settings does allow you to, I mean, it's just cool because you can just call them back up rather easily. Um, you don't have to, you know, 
set the colors and set the XY expansion and multicolor mode and and all that. I mean, you just use one vision basic command and voila, you know, all these attributes are brought back. So, um, so uh, that's it for this uh, demonstration here. The 50176. That's actually the loading address. It gets displayed when you load the data. Um, I don't know what else to say. So I guess we're coming to the end of the video. So if you want to take your basic programming to the next level, visit visionbasic.net and order your copy of Vision Basic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to this channel for more interesting content.